That's a big thank you from the chimpanzee sanctuary. <laughs> so, no matter when the chimpanzees are excited and they are appreciating something, that's how they do pantwood. They do pantwood in a very various uh, pantwoods. But that's one way to thank you because they cannot make it here to say thank you so much for whatever you do. But through people like Joseph, they are able to deliver their thanks. So. Today, I'm so glad to be here. I never thought of being at Black Park Zoo at any moment. But today, <laughs> God has made his own way. So you never know where you're going to be tomorrow. So today, I'm here. Thank you so much, Jesse, with the team for this um, great opportunity to allow me to be over here today and have this presentation. My topic for today is going to be saving the chimpanzees at their age. Like, our colleague has already mentioned um, how the chimpanzees are endangered in Uganda, in Africa, and wherever you can get them. You know. So as we continue, you know, my accent is not, all the same, it's not American accent, so <laughs> <laughs> in case you don't pick up something, just let me know so that I can try to make it understood better. Um, starting with our presentation, uh, Ngamba Island is located in Uganda. Um, I will start by welcoming you at the sanctuary, whereby we have a lot of things that we do over there. Ngamba Island is 100 acres, located on Lake Victoria, uh, the largest lake of Africa, which is the second largest lake after the Great Lakes, that's uh, from Lake Ontario in Canada coming to Michigan, um, Superior, there are five great lakes. So, Lake Victoria, the second after those five great lakes, right over there. Um, if you look at that, uh, the rainforest is 95 acres. And then the area where we have the staff at the guest area and other activities is only five acres. Uh, we have the map of Uganda you can see where you can locate Ngamba Island at that point. How you can get to Ngamba, since it's an island, is on a lake, we use the boats. So we always get out of people say, oh, I've never used the boats. So that's also another great experience. We have the speed boats that can take around 40, 45 to 50 minutes, basing on um, the calmness of the lake. And also we have the canoes that can take a little bit like one hour to arrive over there, one hour and a half. Then also, we have even the chopper can land over there, just in case we have a chopper. We have a small field for small choppers, not big ones. And on your right hand side, um, there's that gentleman, is that Joseph <laughs> talking to you? <laughs> uh, with um, one of our youngest baby, uh, that's um, Africa's boy. They haven't named him yet, they are still debating on. Who can win the name? Maybe it would be Joseph, you know? He's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then down there, there's that great lady. I guess people in the conservation, you must have heard about that lady. I may not even mention the name. Who can help me out? Jane. Excellent. That's Dr. Jane Gdor. And she's the reason why Joseph is here today, because if she wasn't to be Dr. Jane Gdor's efforts with a lot of other trustees, we wouldn't be having Ngamba Island helping the chimpanzees. So through Ngamba Island, I was able to make it to Dizin, and from Dizin, I was able to make it here today. That's so great. Let's move ahead and learn a lot uh, from Ngamba. Chimpanzees are known as our closest relatives, making 98.7 of our genes. Genetically, they are closer to humans than any of the other great apes. We have got five great apes. Sometimes we get a little bit confused when we compare uh, the great apes. Uh, the lesser apes, like the gibbons, we call them lesser apes. And then we have the greater apes, having the gentleman on the corner, the gorillas, or the mountain gorillas, 
they are found in Uganda and Rwanda. We only have two countries in Africa where you can find the mountain gorillas in the wild. You can get them in zoos, sanctuaries, but in their natural environment or in the wild. They are only in Uganda and Rwanda. Then we have the lowland gorillas, a lot of them in Democratic Republic of Congo, which is one of the biggest countries of Africa with the biggest tropical rainforest. Then we have the orangutans, more Asian, they are more in Asia. We, have, we don't have those ones in Africa. But I bring that picture to show um, the great apes that we have. Then we have Miss Sarah. She's called Sarah. She's really loved. It's a lovely chimpanzee. Then on your right, those are the most confusing great apes known as the bonobos. They are only found in Congo, and they look more similar to chimpanzees. If you look at them, you may think uh, they are the same. But they are more close chimpanzees. And you can see how smart these animals are they. They are crossing water, and they have to measure how deep it is before they take a step. And some of us will just go into water and start <laughs> playing around. But the chimpanzees are walking through the water and measuring how deep it is before it takes a step. That shows how these animals are great when it comes to intelligence and our genes. The term chimpanzee comes from the, that word is called shiruba. Shiruba, that is, called, is found in Congo, is um, a, a Bantu language. It's among the Bantu language. You know, Africa, we speak a lot of languages. Uganda, it's sort of, we have 52 languages spoken. <laughs> Only that when you speak English, then you are safe because you can't get lost. Can, mm, uh, just is my witness. When you go to the community, you can get those who can speak English, not everyone, but at least you can communicate. And kids will always say, Muzung, Jambo, Muzung, hello. You know, when we are little kids and you see uh, the white people, because Muzung means uh, the Europeans, by the time they colonized Uganda, uh, they were called Bazungu. So when we see someone of that color, say, Muzung, Jambo, even if you say Chinese, say, Muzungu. I said that myself as well. So, and you see all that. So that word is translated from Kivir chimpanzee, meaning the mock man. That's about that chimpanzee. He's called Robby, he's the former alpha male, but now he's being pressed down. He cannot lead now because there are so many competitors, like in humans, leadership's not all the same. Now, when we go ahead, uh, the map is showing the, the range of chimpanzees. The red are known range and then historical range. You can see how we have lost a number of chimpanzees comparing those days where we had a lot of chimpanzees and now we have approximately 150,000 chimpanzees remaining in the world. Then when you come to Uganda, 4,950 in Uganda just in the wild, no? Those are the chimpanzees we have now. So when we say we are saving chimpanzees at the edge, they are really at the edge because that could used to be like few countries having that population of 150,000 chimpanzees. But now we don't have all that. When we talk about the threats of the chimpanzees, um, that's the area when I'm giving, um, when I'm educating um, about conservation, that area touches me a lot and all, all the time it makes me a little bit cry because of the action that are being done by people. The habitat lot loss is one of the major, major threats to the chimpanzees. That is their home. This is more like someone coming to your home and burn your house. There's food, there's everything in your home, then you get it down. It's the same applied to the animals when people go into their habitat and do that. Because tomorrow, where are they going to get their food? Where are they going to get their home? That's their home. So agriculture is one of the main activities that can force people to go. Because by the edges of the forest, they know they're fertile. So people don't care. 
some of them. And we try to make sure that that's the way we can really make sure we can educate communities. And educating communities, like for conservationists, we know how difficult it is handling communities is the most challenging part in conservation. Because normally, they always stay negative. They may think you only think about the animals. So what can we do in such scenarios? We have to make sure that people in the communities, they are really very important. They are variable. So we come up with different projects. We can write sometimes grants whereby we are able to support these communities by trying to train them to learn to recycle, learn to do eco-friendly products like making beads. Uh, just one time, I think you, uh, you know more about the beads, uh, the communities that we do with um, the local communities. Uh, we train them to make the beads and then they sell to earn a living. In that way, we pass on that message and they can understand the value of conservation. They make things like beads. So we do target more like the ladies in schools. So we have a lot of things that we do, like you'll be seeing as we go further, some of the action that we take um, to ensure conservation. Lumbering, chuck burning is one of the major things. People cut down trees for timber, for charcoal. We have a challenge in Africa whereby not everywhere you can find electricity. So people depend on a lot of things like firewood, charcoal for fuel. So with that, we encourage people to plant more trees. And you'll be seeing that furthermore as we go, how we are trying to change their minds to be positive and love conservation um, rather than depending on the natural resources. Bushmeat, have you ever heard of bushmeat? It's also another factor that affects chimpanzee or the great apes. There are some countries like in Congo, Cameroon, and some other Western countries that do bushmeat. And that's also another great threat that has led the depopulation of chimpanzee numbers. And not only chimpanzees, but also other great apes in general. Man traps, they are used by poachers or the hunters. Sometimes they might not be targeting only the chimpanzees, they may be targeting other species of animals like antelopes. The antelopes that look more like deers. Uh, they are very edible and people do hunt those animals. So the more they place the man traps, they are very, very strong traps. When it gets a chimpanzee, it's, it can lose the arm or the leg. So it depends on how it struggle a lot. So we have a lot of chimpanzees losing their foot because of the man traps and the snare wires. They are really very, very dangerous to their lives. And when you get to the population of the chimpanzee we have at Ngamba, where we have 48 chimpanzees now, a lot of them have got the snare wires and man trap wires, main problems. Losing their toes, their fingers, or the whole hand. So you can see. So when you get such animals, we take a lot of time to make sure that they recover. We have got the veterinary clinics, and we make sure that we put these animals in the quarantine center first for like three months to make sure that they are now able to make it to the group before they get over there. Like you do here, because this is a zoo, um, you know what you do exactly when you get a new animal before it gets to another group, or that kind of treatment to ensure that it's really free from any disease before it joins the other group, and also how difficult it is when you are doing integration to the other group. So those are the challenges that we can have. Um, with the rangers, we have rangers in national parks. And with some of the forests like Chivare, Budongo, where we have the chimp monitors, uh, they do a lot of work to help us. When they get such things, these people can be arrested but we don't want to use that as the major tool. Um, the most important thing is education to change the mindset of the people 
rather than arresting them every day. But the most important action is education, which is really very important because that one can change the mindset of people. And the little kids, when they're growing, they really understand what's important. Why is it important to have these animals exist? Why is it important to have forests? So those are the things we look at. Because like me, I grew up knowing, loving animals. We could visit zoos like Uganda, Wildlife Education Center. And whenever I could go to that place, my friends always pulled me. Let's go, time has gone. We are going, the bus is leaving, you know. But I just enjoyed looking at animals. And I was like, one time I'll be there. I want to be like these guys. And there I am. So it's a dream. Yeah. Pet trade. Have you guys ever heard of the pet trade? Chimpanzee being treat, uh, traded or like any great apes. Like we say, these animals are more like humans. When you look at a chimpanzee as a baby, when it's very young, they look like really very friendly. So when these people arrest baby chimpanzees, you know, someone is taking a chimpanzee or any other animal, you don't have any skill on how you are going to handle that animal. You cannot know what diseases do these animals carry. Do they affect humans? What diseases do humans carry? And they can affect these animals, but you are taking it as a pet. So you don't know, you know nothing about all that. So those are the things we share with people. Chimpanzees, they look to be so jolly, so beautiful. They look nice way, you know like any other animal, and you know, okay, oh, this is going to be a good, because they understand more like humans. But what do you really think about this animal? You don't know the diet of this animal. What are you going to feed on it? You want to know, okay, I know they eat fruits. You know, they eat fruit, but do you know how much that they have? Do you know how much they demand from each type of a fruit? So those are the things that we really try to show people. These animals, when they grow, a chimpanzee is five to six times stronger than humans. And then you are keeping a chimpanzee that is five to six times stronger than a human being at your home, you know? And they think like humans, they can be able to do everything because I work with these animals. I know it happens. You, when you're working with them, just know that this is another set of people, you know? And a gorilla, it can just lift a chimpanzee with one hand and throw it away. And it is throwing away a chimpanzee that is six times stronger than a human. What about if a gorilla holds a human being? What can happen? The answer, I don't know. <laughs> OK. When they get the pets or these animals, that's how they transport them. That made me cry one time when we saw that um, with some of our chimpanzees. We have uh, examples like Baron, Africa, you know those chimpanzees? They were, tr they were carried like that in those kind of setup when they were taken as pets. That's how they move them in a very confined place, very small place. They're just they're screaming they're, because people don't care. They have not the heart of it's not animal welfare, but they're taking them as pets. They don't even have that heart of like, they can't feel it, how these animals are suffering, but they're just there to sell these animals as pets. That's how they transport them. That's uh, the main thing that make me really feel so bad. And we have this challenge as well. Like the first slide of the threads, you saw people going to the habitat to grow crops. And you remember these animals, they think more like humans. They think more like humans. You grow the habitat, you grow your crops, then they wait for your maize because they eat maize. They, come to their, they, they will come to your garden and they eat everything. So we have human wildlife conflict in that era. And they are very smart enough, they can make you cry as well. So sometimes they come and take away the baby. And then they go to the tree. So it happened that one time. They carried that baby on the tree. And then the mom never knew what to do. 
the mom got angry, she got stones, stoning the chimpanzee, instead of thinking the way, the best way to get this chimpanzee down, or to communicate to the local authorities, or say, how can I get people can really understand the chimpanzees? Because this animal, they understand they're more like humans. So what happens when the more you show them aggression, they get more aggressive towards you. So the more you throw stones to it, it they will go to the tree, then they start charging. So the more they charge on the trees, they're holding the baby, the baby, the baby ended up getting injured, but the baby never died. Until they communicate to the local authorities, and then people who are familiar with in that area, and they understand the chimpanzee behavior, or if Ngamba team was close to, we can definitely help out with that, because we can understand how to communicate this chimpanzee and to get the baby back in a very peaceful way without irritating it or making it run more aggressive. So when it happened like that, the community, they can get ag aggressive sometimes toward the chimpanzees, you know? So it happened one time, they had to kill the chimpanzee because it did that. So all that calls upon education and community support to make them really understand the value of this animal. Yeah. So with that is another big challenge that we have in Uganda, especially in the western part of our country. Now when we come to all that, what are the reasons for hope? What are we doing um, to change the communities to help our animals? These are the things we are doing. I'm showing you some of the examples of the animals that we get, uh, the situations where, how they come and where they are now. This is Aikuru. Aikuru has a very great story, a very touching story among uh, the chimpanzees that we have. Before Aikuru came to Ngamba, she was like that. Aikuru observed the way they killed the mother and they wanted to take her as a pet. You know, chimpanzees are very, very, very solitary animals and they work together. They always die together. Taking one chimpanzee as a pet, you have to, take, you have to kill on a ratio or an average of seven to 10 chimpanzees. Because once you kill the mom, the other chimpanzees are going to grab the baby. So you keep on killing one by one. You're not going to take out the chimpanzee. Because they are strong, you cannot approach and grab a baby from them. So you have to kill one by one. If you have got like seven or eight in a group, that means you're going to kill all the eight chimpanzees to take one pet. So you can see how bad is pet trade. Because on average, having 10 pet chimpanzees, that means we have lost around 80 chimpanzees on average. So I could observe that when they were killing the mother, she was dying with the mother until when they killed the mother, she could not leave the mother. She was so tight on the mother until they got something hot, burned her, and she screamed. She got off the mother's body. Then they took her. So she, she developed that kind of trauma every time it comes up. And you see I could sitting down, overthinking, then start rocking. Then just know she's always remembering that. And it took us a lot of time. By then those people who were there, because I was still a, a little kid in school, and they always tell me that story, how I, I could had challenges in joining the community of the other chimpanzees because she was always having that kind of challenge, screaming all the time. And then these other chimpanzees continued to, to tease. You know, chimpanzees behave more like kids in schools. We did that a lot in schools, you know, as little kids. You keep on, when you see someone who is more like, you know, crying all the time, you, you continue teasing him so that you can enjoy him crying, you know. <laughs> so even animals are more like that. They kept on pressing her down all the time. But now she's a grown up female. During the forest walk, when you could go for the forest walk, Aikuru was one of the most uh, friendly chimpanzees. She always loved grooming, um, 
ladies' hair all the time, so especially if you have long hair, she always comes to your head and does that. No? More like you are in a saloon. So we could always tell people, oh, you are in a saloon. <laughs> like, you know? So that's I crew now. She's really amazing chimpanzee. From that level in 2001, now 2013, those are 12 years. It's really a great, now it's now, we are in 2016, that's more. 16 years or 15 years at the sanctuary. We have one of my favorite chimpanzees called Connie. Connie is just an amazing chimpanzee. She came to Ngamba when she was at that age in 19... They rescued her in 1992. Then they took her to Uganda Wildlife Education Center. Then the sanctuary, Ngamba Island Sanctuary, started in 1998. So she's among the group that arrived at the sanctuary right from the beginning of the sanctuary, which is 98. But that's uh, the time when they rescued her, and then they took her to Uganda Wildlife Education Center, where they have a small place for the chimpanzees as well. And we are partners with uh, Uganda Wildlife Education Center. I worked there one time, like for six months before um, then I turned to Ngamba after my internship. So I crew with Connie, they are very good females when it comes to hand raising young chimpanzees. Right now, Connie is one of the most foster parents, I would use that word, because she's good at adapting young chimpanzees. Normally, when we get young chimpanzees, before we hand them to the females, they are under the care of the keepers. So we are the primary foster parents before they get to the females like Connie. So Connie is really very good. You may think she is the mother of Sarah. She adopted Sarah, and she has also adopted a lot of other chimpanzees. So from that level, Sarah is now with Connie, and now she's training, you can see, She's now training Sarah to climb trees. So from here, this is another place or enclosure where they go before they make it the forest. Now when they get the forest, she's now training the, the little girl to experience the beauty of the forest. That's Naku. Naku means soul, as in S-O-U-L. That's the meaning of that word. The time when Nak arrived at the sanctuary that day, we had missed one of the chimpanzees, a young baby, because she came when she was, in a, she was rescued in a very critical condition, and it was late. We couldn't make it survive. So she came at that time when everyone was like in Seoul. And they had to give her that name, Naku, meaning soul. So Naku came to Ngamba when she was around eight months. That's her. So in 2011, she got a double fracture of the arm. And we had to make all that. I spent a lot of time with her in the quarantine until she recovered with other keepers as well because I joined Ngamba on the 17th of May in 2010. So by 2012, 2011, I was there. So I took a lot of time with this little girl. She's so friendly uh, in the quarantine, and we became so friends. So every time she wanted to be close to me, you can now see how <laughs> she could always be like, oh, Joseph, how are you? And then now, <laughs> uh, that's how we do it. That's what uh, that was in 2012, and now, She's there. She's really a big female. So that is animal welfare and that we really ensure. This is Sarah. When Sarah just arrived, she always wanted to be you know, around people all the time. So as keepers, we do that primary work to make sure that we take care of these young ones before we give them to the females. Medina was in the same group of Sarah. So like animal enrichment, when I was doing a tour around with my, my friends around here, I saw a lot of enrichment, which is really very great welfare for the animals. So these animals, when they are 
just in the same place, uh, they get bored. So we need to think of things that can keep them busy before they get to the wide areas or where they're supposed to be. So Medina had a skill of painting. She could paint a lot of pictures, and people could even buy them from the shop. I guess you have some. <laughs> so Medina is a good painter. So that time before, we integrated them to the group. They could spend time in the holding facility. So that time, to keep the boredom, we need to be creative and give them a lot of things that can help these animals to be very active and act all the time before they get to the group. So from that point, they get to the females. That's Bahati, Connie's best friend. So they are raising up Sarah together. And from that point, they are able to join the group of other big male. Tumbo. Tumbo in Swahili means very big berry or stomach. <laughs> no. So <laughs> by, the t by the time we rescued Tumbo, he was really very small with a lot of worms in his stomach. So he had a big, a big berry. He's now one of, I would say, one of the most loved chimpanzee and in the whole sanctuary. Everyone who comes tells me, how old is that Musei? Musei means the old. Eh? I mean, is, is, is he the oldest? Because I can see he's having gray hair, but he is not the oldest. He's actually now around 27 years. He's turning 27 years. Yeah, he's not the oldest. So, Tumba is one of the very good big males who are very good at taking care of the young ones. So you can see, Sarah is so comfortable. Nini is so comfortable with Tumbo. Now from that point, Sarah is able to be in the forest, climb the trees on herself without other help. So that's how we do it, so that they can really experience um, the beauty, the naturalness of our tropical rainforest at the sanctuary. In this team, we have Tumbo still, and Kidogo. Kidogo means something very, or something little or small in Swahili as well. So when Kidogo was rescued, he was very, very small. And right now, he is the leader of the females. We would say the alpha female. Karema is the aspiring alpha male. He's um, in the, you know, the Hillary Clinton. Eh? Next year is going to be, I mean this year. So he's standing for the alpha position to be the president, you know? <laughs> we have Karima and Mutama. I did not get the picture of Mutama, but Mutama is in this group here. I can see him around this corner. Uh, he's really very big as well, like Karima. So these two, they are struggling for the politics, for the power. Karima has more support from the juvenile group or the young boys. And Mutama has more support from the big team. So we don't know who is going, who is smart enough to take over. But what I know is chimpanzees, once you win the support from the females, then you are going to lead. That's one thing I know about chimpanzees. So it's not all about being very strong, but to be smart to play games around. Because once the female chimpanzees give you the support, all the other young males are going to be on their side. That's how the chimpanzees do. So if one of them can manage to win the population of votes from the females, one of them is going to be a leader. Then Masco is the most confusing politician, <laughs> more like humans. It's just to disorganize everyone. He has no, like, this is my party, this is my, no. His work is just to make Disorganized everyone is one of the oldest chimpanzees that we have. It's around 31 now. And you can see here, this is Karima before Mika. Mika, when he was a leader, he could always check Karima because Karima was becoming a threat. So they could always try to fight. And Rambo, this is his name, is one of my favorite chimpanzees. He's so acrobatic. He likes to play games like, you know, I, I used to watch um, uh, movies of Rambo or, you know, Sylvester Stallone, that kind of style. And so Rambo is so more like, you know, it's a movie, eh? it's, it's a star. Eh? <laughs> so it's so good with that. So this is how they come to the feeding area from the forest. And then after feeding, they go back into the forest 
we do feed these chimpanzees four times in a day. And every time of feeding, that's the time you can be able to see them. So with the feeding area, this is the holding facility where they sleep. The one major reason why the chimpanzees sleep in the holding facility, we always get questions, why are, not, why are, are they not staying in the forest? It's a very small area. Ngamba is 100 acres. The forest is 95 acres, like I shared before. And chimpanzees are more destructive during the evening hours because more like humans, they are able to make nests. So every time they are making nests, they break uh, the trees or the leaves. So if you leave them to stay in that very small place, in a few months, the forest will be down, and there will be no trees. So for sustainable use of the forest, we do encourage them to come and stay in the holding facility, whereby we have <laughs> hammocks. They are able to do nesting in the hammocks like they would do in the wild. For, them, for their well-being, um, they are able to experience that kind of nature. The vet team is there doing the great work. <laughs> this is uh, one of them. Uh, this is Stane. Stanley worked with chimpanzees for 25 years. I learned a lot of him, uh, a lot of things. Actually, is our grooming um, keeper. He has been the head keeper, but he just said, I, I, I have to rest. He's now resting. I say he's resting because any time when we need him, he can help us out. But he has, he has a lot of experience with chimpanzees. He's among the top five people in the world when it comes to understanding uh, the chimpanzee behavior. I learned from him uh, that those calls that I was pant hooting is really great. He can understand any pant hoot when the chimpanzees are in the forest, that that chimpanzee is meaning this. This is happening in the forest. And when you go there, you find them exactly what he has told you here is what is happening over that side. So with that experience, it was really great. So after feeding, this is the evening time when they are feeding. We give them porridge to, gain, to get more protein and other uh, like um, iron in the body. You know, porridge has a lot of iron in the body. Uh, for the chimpanzees, it's very good to get some iron. And uh, the protein is really very good for them because they eat more fruits um, than the rest of the uh, food stuff. Then this is the rest that connects the holding facility to the forest. So they move from the holding facility through the raceway to the forest. So while they're in the forest, this is the feeding area, and we stand on the viewing platform. Then we throw the food over. So we do three feedings over to the feeding area. Then the fourth feeding is done at the holding facility when they come back. So the time when they come back, this is the time when all the keepers will have to monitor all these animals if they're all doing well, if they've got any injuries like you guys do here, for those who are keepers, you do all that to keep records. If any animal is not feeling well, so that you can keep it back, so that tomorrow the vets can do the rest of the work. That's what we do. And when the guests are around, that's where they stand on the big platform uh, to see the chimpanzees. You see all the behaviors being displayed at the viewing area at that time. Environment education uh, is one of the main things that is really very important that has helped us to change a lot of people uh, towards conservation. Uh, we have um, music, dance, and drama. I really loved this part. And uh, we have a lot of different experiences. Music, dance, and drama. There are those who are good with music, I mean with singing. There are those who are talented with dance. There are those who are good with drumming. My talent was drumming. I wasn't good with singing, but I love songs. But I was good at making people dance by drumming. <laughs> and also doing some kind of drama. Um, we did a lot of things in school. So we do that. Uh, we, can, we can get a theme or a topic that the schools can play around to compose their songs and create their drama based on environmental education. That's really very good. It's one of my favorite parts because I really enjoy educating about conservation. Our executive director is giving a very good speech to the kids, inspiring them to love conservation. That's Lily Ajarova. Down here, 
this is one of the most loved schools I love home. You know? uh, they re these kids are really so passionate about wildlife. They visit in Gamba a lot of times. And every time when they come, they collect a lot of money to support the chimp and they're like, we need, stuff. we need to. So sometimes they can come and they collect over $200 for the chimpanzees. So after you give them a very wonderful education, <coughs> conservation education, they collect and then through their teacher, they hand you an, uh, some envelope. Then when you open, there's something for the chimpanzees. So with that kind of setup in education, we really change a lot of kids to be more conservation through wildlife clubs, conservation education, drama like that, a lot of things. Tree planting project in schools and in communities. So when we are in schools, I will encourage um, schools to come up with, because most of our schools, they have uh, some land around. And they can use some of the land, piece of land, to plant trees so that these kids can grow knowing the importance of tree. No matter when I'm educating kids, I always ask them simple questions. What is the importance of trees? Then they give you the importance of the trees. What's the importance of animals? They answer. Then after that, you give them the real thing that you want them to do. And they get, oh, I didn't know about that. You know? So you just play around. Then this side, we train people in the communities, like in the villages, um, to reduce on use of firewood. That is really a very big problem. Uh, we train people to come up with um, the idea of making energy saving stuff that cannot consume a lot of firewood. In that way, you are trying to encourage the communities to have sustainable use of resources by having some way of economizing the utility level, which is really being experienced in, in the uh, communities. Our education officer, Silva Birongi, um, is doing an exhibition trying to educate more about the great apes and to the local communities as well. Then here, the local leaders, uh, they try to help a lot, especially um, the, king, uh, the kings or the king elders. They do a lot of conservation education uh, to the schools. These are secondary education, <coughs> visiting the palaces of the kings, especially in the Western Uganda, educating about animals, or why is it important to have these animals? It's really very, very important uh, to have that in mind with our kingdomship. Habitat monitors. I guess you guys, in, you, can, you can at least know someone there. <laughs> 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 so with this, these guys, every time they are like, please say hi to Jess. <laughs> Say hi to pet, you know. So they don't like Black Park Zoo. They uh, because they only know two people. They know two people. So like you send our greetings to everyone through Jess and all that. So this is Lily and Jess. I think she knows what she was, she was doing because that's already practical work. And uh, she knows what these, these guys really do with um um at the habitat monitoring. So that has helped a lot of our community members to really love conservation. And we call them our conservation ambassadors because there's a great job being done over that side. Reforestation, that's a great work that we do because you have already seen a lot of gaps in our forest. Um, so we have a lot of tree planting projects, especially the western part of Uganda. So with our sanctuary, it's not all about uh, taking care of the chimpanzees only, but we take care of the whole environment, both the captive chimpanzees that are found at Ngamba Island and uh, the wild chimpanzees uh, that are found in Uganda in the rest of uh, the existing forests like Budongo National Park. Uh, we have <coughs> Chibar National Park and so many other forest edges around the park that have got chimpanzees. So we can really have these animals because the reason why we have Ngamba chimpanzees being rescued, the main reason is to rescue these chimpanzees, take care of them, and 
use that as a major tool to educate the public so that we can save the remaining chimpanzees in the wild. Because the reason why we have these ones, people were ignorant about these animals or about conservation. So if we have standard conservation actions in the communities, then that would be very great work uh, for the sanctuary uh, to meet uh, the goals or objectives. Yeah. Great thanks from the entire Chimpanzee Trust to Blank Park Zoo for the great support that you guys do since 2012, something of the sort. We really get a lot of support. Uh, you can see how this team, these are Blank Park Zoo t-shirts and kind of like all that. So it's, all these are community monitors in the parks. So we have Ingamba Island as the core area, as the sanctuary. Then we have other areas in Budongo by the edges of Chivale, that's in Hoima district, that really does a work with the wild chimpanzee, where I just was doing the monitoring of uh, the chimpanzees and taking tree measurements and also trying to know more about uh, reforestation. So you guys, you have done a wonderful job. You know, this arrived there when I was in there, but they had to send me this, big, this beautiful picture. This is Annette, very, very excited to receive uh, the field shoes. This is really amazing. Um, on their behalf, I really appreciate uh, the great support from uh, this zoo, um, different donors, uh, in your respective capacity because I cannot categorize. So it's really a great thank to Blank Park Zoo. And I'm so grateful to be here today. Everyone is like, where are you? I'm at Blank Park Zoo. Oh my goodness. Oh, Joseph, you are so lucky. <laughs> so I'm really very lucky to be here today and saying all these words uh, to you um, about what we do. I really appreciate um, in a very big way <laughs> That's Sarah. No, Sarah is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, uh, I finally say uh, thank you so much. Uh, that is part of our team. Not everyone is there, but for those who were there that day after the meeting, uh, we had that big uh, photo. I uh, can see this is Stane, um, the famous man with chimpanzees. Um, this is Joseph, uh, this is uh, Nate, uh, this is Evelyn, uh, a lot. I cannot mention everyone because we are so many. Then Asega, this is Asega, mm, uh, one of the most intelligent chimpanzees, so acrobatic, he thinks like humans. He's very stubborn. This chimpanzee can make you cry at some point. <laughs> You want him to do this, he's doing the opposite. When you want him to do this, he's doing the opposite. It just doesn't disturb you. And the, the reason why he has failed to be in the group, I think you guys, because this is a Zoom, I guess you also have some challenges whereby one animal is not comfortable or he doesn't want to be in the other group. That is almost everywhere. I've done a lot of things, um, I mean, uh, during the the conference, you can see that everyone is like, oh, we have that challenge still. So Asega is very smart, and being very smart has failed him to be in the group because he thinks he is better than everyone. <laughs> so the whole community decided to say, okay, since you are so smart, we don't want to see you in our group. They keep on challenging him there. That's it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.